This scripture came to my heart. It's out of the book of Acts chapter 4. You read this in verse 32. These are just the beginning days of that church. A lot like these are our beginning days. We're still so young. But the Bible says in Acts 4, 32, Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power. Somebody say great power. With great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace. Say great grace. Great grace grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all. Now the very next verse tells you more about this grace that was on them. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. You could not find one person in that church and that was a big church. That church was growing by the thousands and thousands. They went from 120 hiding out in an upper room. Later that day, there were 3,000 people in the church. And then another 5,000. And then another 10,000. And the Bible says, because of the great grace that was on all of them, you couldn't find one person among the whole group that lacked anything. And it had nothing to do with being a church in the rich part of town. It had nothing to do with having a bunch of influential business leaders in the church. You want to know what it had to do with? Great grace. Great grace. That word great. It's the Greek word megas. Take a stab at what word we get from that. Mega. What kind of grace was on these people? Mega grace. Great grace. Big grace. And it was providing for them. It was grace that was saving them. It was grace that was healing them. It was grace that was delivering them. And it was grace that was providing for them. And you keep reading and it says that none of them thought that any of their own land, their own houses, I think my translation might say their own cars were their own, but they saw somebody in need just like you heard in that testimony. Somebody in the family's got a need. I've got something that meets the need. And they give it to them. And what did they say? You don't owe me anything. Can you just try that out loud? They don't owe me anything. Praise God. That's debt forgiveness. That's debt reduction. That's supernatural debt cancellation. And you sow that. And guess what's coming? People are going to be doing it for you. Amen. One more time. Shout it out loud. Great grace is on us all. You believe that today? Well, one more time, give the Lord a shout of praise and thanks for it. He's so good to us. You can be seated. Thank you, Lord. He has been so good to us. Good morning, church. Are you happy today? I'm telling you what, it hit me so fresh and so new this week that what you and I do in here together for just a few minutes once a week This is not just something where we're checking a box. This is not just something we do out of habit or tradition. This is important. And I believe this is one of the most important things you or I or anybody else could do with their time. Because you could have been anywhere today. You realize that, don't you? You could still be in bed this morning. Some of you might are acting like it, but that's all right. You got got, got a good hour left. You can wake on up. Yeah, it's going to be a good day. You could be anywhere today, but you're here, you're honoring the Lord. And he said, those who honor me, I will honor them. And I'm just telling you, this is the most valuable thing you could do with your time. Well, uh, as Sarah mentioned, we've got a lot of good things going on around here. Did you happen to notice anything new when you walked into church this morning? Isn't it looking good out there? I'm so thrilled with this. I just get to come throughout the week and just stand there and look at it. And it just does my heart so good to see the progress that we're making And one of the ways you continue to make progress is give God thanks for every little step you take along the way. And I'm like you, you're like me, we we wanna see things done, hurry up, let's get this finished, but uh, we gotta make sure we're thankful all along the way. And that's why I've been reading to you the progress that we make each week. Can I just tell you a few more things about some of the work that took place around here this past week? I'm going to read some stuff. It don't make any sense to me. It's probably not going to make much sense to any of you, but it's progress, and we're going to get excited and happy about it. And I think we've got some pictures that show some of the things that have taken place over the last week. Uh, we finished moving the sink plumbing for the new bathrooms. I, look, I get it. I know plumbing. It's one of those things you don't think about until something's wrong with it. And then it's all you think about. 
So how many of you are thankful for good plumbing? Yes. How many of you believe that God's house should have some good plumbing in it? Here's another good thing to rejoice over. We passed the plumbing inspection. That's good news right there. Uh, We framed the stairs to the landing. We framed the sheetrock, one side of the walls around the staircase, demoed the curtain wall in the upstairs lobby and ceiling and prep for electrical. We have run electrical disconnects for a few of the HVAC outdoor condensers. Do boop, beep, boop, pop, pop, all this means. Uh, We ran more electrical and additional circuits throughout the project. We continued running ductwork for the HVAC system in the hospitality and lobby areas. We passed our new gas line inspection for the HVAC. So we're just passing all kinds of tests this week. And we are so thankful for these guys that have come out, the construction team, and of course our own staff that are working so hard on this. And uh, they are really making great progress. And aren't we thankful for it? Thank you, Lord. So make sure you're coming each week and you're seeing the progress of the good things that are taking place. And um, I'll tell you, this building, I think this building's right about 30 years old. And so a lot of it was outdated and needed some, needed some love. Can I just put it like that? Just needed some love. And so much has taken place in the few years that we've been here, but as you can see, more has taken place now. But that's all that's taking place right now. We're just loving you, loving the Lord, loving each other, and loving this place that he gave us. We need to take care of it. We need to value it. And in 30 years, uh, nobody ever put air conditioning in it. I guess they just thought, you know, you live in the mountains, you got a few days where you might sweat it out, deal with it. Well, we've got kids up there in all of these classes And I don't want you as a parent going to pick up your child, sweating, you know what I mean? Just like about to pass out from heat. We want this to be a fun place for them to come. I want your kids waking you up on that Sunday morning where you thought you were going to get away with sleeping in. I want your kids to come into your bedroom, wake you up and say, what are you doing in bed? I got to get to church. Get up and get me to church. So we do all this to make this a wonderful place for them and for you, all of us. And the Lord is really helping us. Thank God. Guys, I'm going to change our order up a little bit on you. And we're going to go into our building, our Jubilee Project update. Um, Most of you know that we released Faith Together just a few weeks ago for the total payoff of this property. And we've been here since 2019, and the Lord has helped us make great progress in that. But it came up strong in our hearts uh, at the beginning of this year that it was time to get this thing paid off, that we are not to live under the burden of the debt of it for 15, 20, 30 years, but we're to release faith together to be totally free. Amen. 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 Jesus paid a high price for our freedom, and that freedom is supposed to be ours in every area of our life, spirit, soul, and body. Do you believe that? And that's why we put the scripture up here, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, that says, you are called to be free. I'm called to be free. How about you? That's my calling in this life. I am called to be free from anything and everything that acts like a prison, anything that tries to hold me down, keep me back. I am called to be free of that, and so are you. So are you. You're called to be free. So that's what we're believing God for in this. And he is a big God, and for him, this is a little thing, isn't it? This is such a little thing. And in the last several years, if you take the purchase price of the building and you break it all up into square footage, you can see here we have progressed, out of the 30,000 square foot facility, we have progressed 11,884 square feet. That's how much of this building is paid off. Isn't that awesome? That is a miracle. So that has left us with 18,116 square feet remaining. Now, before I tell you about the progress we made in this last week, I want you to remember that this isn't just about freedom or debt freedom for the church or even just your own personal debt freedom. Jesus didn't just call us to be free from things. He's called us to be free for what he wants us doing, where he wants our time and our money invested. So if you've got those renderings of what we're believing God to be able to do upstairs, these are pictures of what we want our children's and our youth ministry to look like. Now, right now, these rooms don't look anything like this. They're bare, they're rough, they're bad, kind of like the rest of the building was when we got here. But it's good to have some vision in front of you. Stop right there for a minute. 
we want to convert one of the rooms that are upstairs into a worship room for our children and our teenagers. Now, this is a, this is a room that we can put 100 seats in for teenagers, for children, and give them their own space to encounter the presence of the Lord that would change them and cause them to have a real relationship with Jesus. And that is what we want. Amen. How many believe they are worth our investment? Yes, they are. So this is what we want to be free to do. But before we can be free to do this, we got to be free from this debt. So that's why we're believing God in that. Go ahead and go back to that uh, graphic of our progress. So as of last week, we had 11,884 square feet paid for at $100 a square foot. And since last week, just in the last seven days, we've had another 76 square feet paid for, which puts us at 11,960 totally paid for. So we are knocking on the door of 12,000 square feet paid for. That leaves 18,040. And as I've mentioned to you before, the building will actually be paid off before we get to the end of that. But once we get it paid off, the whole remainder will be available for the children's ministry. So I'm just telling you again, this is an opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. Uh, and if you're believing God to be debt free, which you should be, then the first thing you and I need to do is find a kingdom project to release faith in, to sow into, because those are opportunities that open up the door of access for God to go to work in our lives. You believe that? Yes. Are you thankful for the progress that we're making? I'm telling you, we've seen it over and over and over again. Progress, we make it step at a time, step at a time, step at a time. And we're thankful for every step we take. And one week, 76 square feet will be paid for. The next week, 10,000 square feet will be paid for. That was a good place to say amen. Well, uh, before we receive our offering today, um, I've got some guests here with us. This past week, Sarah and I hosted our annual board meeting. And we had the board of directors for Pearson's Ministries International, the board of directors for Legacy Church come. And we had a great time together and, and talked about a lot of these things, went over the great report from last year, gave them vision for the coming year. And I want to introduce you to a couple of our directors today who are two of the founding uh, board of director members for this ministry. Rick and Nettie Reyna, would you please stand and allow people to welcome you to church today? Rick, come on up, sir. Uh, Rick and Nettie are friends of ours. Do I have a microphone, Sarah, for Rick? These are friends of ours that go back a long, long way. And Rick and I have been ministering together for a long time. They come to us from Southern California, but don't hold it against them. Um, and, you know, as a matter of fact, I was thinking about this recently. Rick was one of the first people I called 16 years ago and said, I met a girl. And that's how close we've been for all these years. And we're so thankful to have them as a part of the board of our ministry. They speak wisdom into our lives. And the Spirit of God speaks so clearly to them and through them. And I asked Rick if he would receive our offering today. So church, can you welcome him and be open to the word of the Lord? Go ahead, brother. Take your time. Hallelujah. You, Praise Lord. the Lord. Amen. Is there anybody excited in the place this morning? Now, I need to warn you, for the next few minutes, I need you all to behave. Say amen. amen. I know you might get excited because I believe I heard from the Lord for you this morning con concerning our giving. And I believe when you hear it, you might get excited, but I need you to behave. Say amen. Amen. I believe faith is going to come in such a way and it's going to possess you, but I need you to behave. Amen. Amen. And I need you praise team back here. Don't be playing any extra keyboards or get excited. Drummer, don't get excited. Amen. Amen. I only have a few minutes, so don't be pulling. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn my alarm on here. How many people want to hear what God has to say to us this morning concerning our giving? Amen. So I'm going to read it to you. After, after Pastor Jeremy asked me, would I take a few minutes and talk about our, our giving this morning, I went back to my hotel. And I'm telling you, Jesus was waiting for me. He had a bucket of things to say to me. I said, Jesus, I only have three minutes. 
He says, I'm able to, to speak through you to the people. Are you ready? Say amen. amen. The Lord said this morning concerning our giving, it is going to be a uncapping in our life. This morning, there's going to be some uncapping in our lives this morning. There's been some areas that has been capped. God's about to uncap them. And you're going to see a change like never before. The second thing he said concerning our offering this morning, there's going to be some wells redug that the enemy has covered. You're about to experience very soon some wells with some gushers. Say amen. amen. Now don't get excited with me this morning. Then I heard this. That these caps are coming off on our businesses. That these wells are going to be redug, and they're going to send a gusher. In such a way that a few of you. Soon and very soon are going to come to the pastors and say, Pastor, I would like to bring you my ties on my gusher. There's a few that will say, here's my $10,000 tithe, Pastor. Then the Spirit of the Lord said, there's going to be a few that's going to come to Pastor and say, Pastor, there's some things that have been uncapped concerning my business and my personal life. Here's my tithe. It's going to be $100,000. I thought the Spirit of God was done there. He says, no. He says, there's a few. Go like this if you believe this is going to be you. There's going to be a few that's going to come to the pastor and say, pastor, I hit a gusher. There's some wells redug in my life. Then I'm gushing. And I like to bring you my ties. Pastor, here's my ties. A million dollar check. If that's you and you believe it, say amen, somebody. All right, let me continue. I believe this morning concerning our tithing and our giving. Our tithing and our giving this morning, listen to me, is making room for expansion in our personal life. I honestly believe that God wants this ministry to expand. But if you're not expanding, it can't expand. Say amen. So this morning, I want you to get ready to expand. Somebody go like this, like you're expanding. Amen. Now here is the word that the Lord said to me. He said, your steady and faithful giving will cause you and will keep you in line for the next. Your steady and faithful giving, tithing and sowing, will keep you in line for the next. Then the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, have you guys ever maybe heard somebody testify about a breakthrough like that young woman that got her, her, her passport, visa, and like a new car. She, God blessed her. Then the enemy immediately came and said, how come that never happens to you? Listen to me now. Now, when you're steady and you're faithful in your tithing and your sowing, your response to that is, devil, you're a liar. I'm next in line. You ever heard this phrase? It happens to me all the time. But the catch here is, in order to stay in line, you got to be steady and faithful. Then the Spirit of the Lord says, be watchful that you don't get out of line. Or somebody takes cuts in line because of your not steady in faithfulness. The other day up the street... There's a donut shop called the Donut Mills. It's been there 40 years. 
Don't tell nobody, but I went through the other day to get a donut. And they have donuts that big, 12 inches round. Well, I walked into this donut shop, and there was a gentleman in front of me. He was ordering his donuts. And I was kind of peeking around him. And I, I wanted to get a view of the donuts before I got to the front. But the Spirit of God says, be patient because you're next in line. He says, if you stay faithful in line, your name will be called. But he said, Rick, be steady and be faithful. Don't try to take cuts. Don't take another avenue. He says, be steady and be faithful in your tithing and your sowing, and you'll be next in line. Is there anybody in the building this morning that will say, I'm next in line? Is there anybody in the building this morning that will say, I could use a gusher right now? Is there any caps coming off this morning? Say amen. All right, I'll finish with this. Steady and faithful in our giving keeps you in the line to be next in line. Say this out loud with me. I'm next in line. When you're steady and faithful in your giving and your tithing, listen to me, it keeps you in a place of freedom. I was sharing with Pastor Jeremy the other day. We just became debt, debt free. We just received a $1.3 million check that got us out of debt. Literally wiped out everything and with money left over. Thank God that I stayed in line. Thank God that I was steady and faithful. Ladies and gentlemen, the cap came off. And what did I do with the $1.3 million? I said, God, what do I do with this money now? He says, go buy your wife a million-dollar house. So today my wife has a debt-free $1 million house. That's what I'm talking about being free. Your steady and your faithfulness will get you in a place of freedom. Does anybody want to be free this morning? Say amen. All right, let me give you a scripture here. The Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 31, Jesus was speaking. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him. Do we have any believers in the house? Are you believing what I'm saying this morning? I believe Jesus is speaking about taking some caps off, about redigging some wells in our lives so we can live in the, in the land of Goshen, not just hear about it. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue, doesn't that sound like steady and faithfulness? If you will continue in my word, then you will be my disciples. But this is where I wanted to get at. Look at the next verse, verse 32. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. This morning, the truth is, if you stay steady and faithful, and you're sowing and you're giving, you will be his disciple. Now, if you know anything about the disciples, they had no care. They had no need. They seen multiplication. They seen the thousands fed. They seen the dead raised back to life. They lived in a place of multiplication, a place of freedom. But the catch here is Jesus said, if you would believe, if you continually live in, dwell in the truth, to be continually. Is the, is the key here. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. To, to be continually in something means to be steady and faithful. 
Now, I want to finish. We know there's a lot of great projects going on in this ministry. If you believe that, say amen. amen. There's many great visions taking place in this ministry. Say amen. How many know that this ministry is touching the world? And it's God's will that this ministry be totally free. But in order for it to be free, it has to have a people who live in free. I'm telling you right now, God's about to take some caps off in some people's lives. And I declare within 30 days, within 30 days, some major caps are coming off. If that's you, go like this. Amen. And I believe in the name of Jesus by the Spirit of God, within 30 days, some wells are going to be redug that you've been believing God for for years. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning with your tithes and your offering. Pastor Jeremy, I know you're going to explain how to do this. But I want you to confess this with me this morning. Amen. Do you believe what God is saying this morning? Say amen. Yes, I do. Say this with me. Say, I will continue. I will continue. I will be steady and faithful. I will be steady and faithful. In my giving. In my giving. Say this. Say, I am expanding. I am expanding. Mm -hmm. Go like this when you say that. Say, I am expanding. I am expanding. Say this. Say, I am next in line. Next in line. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can't you see those donuts? (laughs) How many can see the breakthroughs? Yeah, come on. If God can do it for them, he can do it for me. Thank you, Lord. My lands. And let's say this last confession. I am steady and faithful. I am steady and faithful. And I am free. And I am free. You believe that? Say amen this morning. Praise Pastor Lord, Jeremy, praise amen. Lord. Now listen. Thank you, Lord. Listen, as Rick was sharing his testimony, what the Lord's done for them in the last couple of years, and that major blessing that came into their lives, I'm privileged to know a little bit more about it. What he didn't tell you is about the decades that led up to that. Am I right? Yeah. Decades of faithfulness, decades of service to the Lord and service to others, and not quitting, not quitting, and staying faithful. Now, when you said that, Rick, about a $1.3 million check coming in, I felt some people excited about it. Then when you said you got a million-dollar house, I felt less people (laughs) excited about it. Now, listen, you need to really, really watch how you respond to something like that. Because if you choke on it, and a critical thought or a judgmental thought comes to your mind, or you voice that about somebody else and what they've got, be very, very watchful. Because what you judge another for, you disqualify yourself from ever having. Ever having. You judge somebody for having something, you immediately disqualify yourself from ever having it, ever enjoying it. So when somebody says, look what the Lord's done for me, you don't stand back and go, hmm, I don't know about that. Well, if you're smart, you don't do that. You rejoice. And you say, if the Lord has done it for you, he'll do it for me. Amen. So we were given an opportunity this morning. Rick, you gave our church an opportunity to get excited about your debt freedom. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think we got excited enough. So I want you, in your great and kind, gracious mercy, give us another opportunity. Just real quick, tell us again, are you debt free? Yes, sir. Tell, tell, tell me what happened. Tell me. I don't get no more phone calls from debt collectors. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I don't have to hit that pause button no more because you know who's calling you. That's right. I can answer the phone now and say, hello, Rick Reyna, without no fear. Yeah, praise the Lord. I know what it is for the car collector to call me. Mm-hmm. And I'm in church. Mm-hmm. But I can pick up the phone now and say, hello, Rick Reyna. Yeah. 
Let me tell you, that's when you spoke to me the other day and you talked about freedom. You said, you said, Brother Rick, I've been talking about freedom. I heard you, but I wanted to go home and talk to Jesus about it. He says, well, Jesus told the disciples, if you continue, that's how you'll stay free. Stay in line. And now to add to what you said, Pastor, was the quickest way to get out of line is to have an attitude. Okay. Not celebrate with somebody. Yeah. You, you forfeit yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you talked about for 16 years, mm -hmm. I didn't want to get into that, but for 16 years, I let other families live on my property that we previously lived on, debt free for 16 years. And I could have charged them $1,000 a month, but the Spirit of God says, Bless their families. Now, for 16 years, yeah. I was steadily mm -hmm. and faithfully, faithfully in line. And just to add this, someone came and knocked on my door and said, we're building a car dealership around your property, and your property is in the middle of the car dealership. Now, steady and faithful, 16 years. You need to tell the story. So 16 years ago, we bought a piece of property. Should they sit, Pastor? Is it okay? Yeah, go ahead. Sit down. Yeah. 16 years ago, we bought a piece of property for $170,000. Well, we built our office there, and there were some other houses on that property, and we moved in one, and we put the ministry there on that property, and we didn't charge the ministry rent to operate out of there. Then some other families needed place to, places to live. So there were some, some nice trailers and houses there. And we allowed those families to come. And I'm thinking, man, I'm going to bank. Hmm. I got five families here, $1,000 a month. 5000 a month, money cometh. Amen. But when the Lord spoke to me, he says, don't charge them a penny. You need to sow into them. Because your sowing will set up your future. Yes. So for 16 years, we didn't charge these families. And there were different families that came, came, came and gone. But in, 15, in 16 years, that property went up to 460000 So it went up a few hundred thousand dollars. But a year ago, an investor bought that whole area, and he was going to make a car dealership. So they started construction. But our house was literally in the middle of the car dealership. And they came knocking on my door. And they said, Mr. Reyna, we want to buy your house. I said, how much? They said, we'll give you a million dollars for your home. I said, ooh, where do I sign? <laughs> my house is only worth four sixty-five. dollars I'm doubling here. I said, the Lord has been good. I told the man, I'll meet you tomorrow at Starbucks and we'll sign some papers. Well, that night we went to bed. My wife, Nettie, woke up the next morning. And when she woke up, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to her and said three times, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. She woke out of bed. She came to my office. I was in prayer. And she walked in with her hair sideways, her pajamas sideways. And her eyelashes were like this, half hanging off. She said, she said, the Lord spoke to me and said for us not to sell the property. I'm looking at her say, baby, we already told the man we'll take a million dollars. She goes, well, call him right now and tell him God said for us not to do it. I said, it's 6 in the morning. She said, I don't care. Wake him up. I said, I said, I said, Nettie, at least give me the 8 a.m. She goes, you better call him at 8. If you don't, I will. At 8 a.m., I text him. He called me at 8.30 and said, Mr. Rayner, what's going on? I said, Ryan, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to my wife. I, I quickly threw it on the Spirit of the Lord. <laughs> I said, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to my wife this morning and said for us not to sell you our property. He says, you're crazy. 
He says, no, no one's going to give you double for your property. I said, I understand, but we're going to obey God. So long story short, we told him, no, we went to Southwest. Uh, you know, I seen you there, and, and I talked to your father. Well, three months passed by, and my phone rang again. It was the investor. He said, Mr. Randy, you can see the construction. Now, you got to be watchful when you're in line obeying God. Watch the pressure. Yeah. Pressure will cause you to become unfaithful. Unfaithfulness will get you out of the line. That's right. So watch the pressure. Three months later, he calls me back and says, look, Mr. Rainer, we really need your property. As you notice, there's semis, there's constructions. I said, I noticed. He goes, I'll tell you what, I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. Sound like the godfather, huh? <laughs> I said, what's the offer? He said, we'll give you $1.1 million, $100,000 more. I said, where do I sign? No, I didn't. <laughs> I said, let me pray. Because I realized... If I stay in line, God will speak for me. Yes. God, I'll be able to see the hand of God if I stay in line. I'm next in line. So I said, I'll call you back in 30 minutes. So within those 30 minutes, I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, what are you saying about this? He said, I want you to call the investor back and you tell him what I said. I said, God, what are you saying? He says, for every time I told your wife, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. I want you to tell the investor to give you $100,000 every, for every don't do it. And matter of fact, tell him I want him to pay the closing costs. That's $80,000. So I called the investor back. I said, Mr. Investor, <laughs> God said to me, for me to sell you my property. He said, good, 1.1. I said, no. God said for, me, for you to give me 1.3 and for you to pay the closing cost. He says, you're crazy. He says, no one's going to give you three times more than your property. I said, well, it's not for sale. He says, wait, 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 don't hang up. You see, when you stay in line yes. and you're steady. Yes. When you stay in line and you're steady and you're faithful, your God will speak for you. You'll see mountains move. You'll see breakthroughs take place for you. But you got to stay in line and you got to stay faithful. Yes. There's some people in this place, you've been in line and you've been steady and you've been faithful. You've been behind the vision of this church. You're about to experience a gusher in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So I told the man, I'll sell it to you for 1.3 and you pay the closing costs. He said, let me call you back in 30 minutes. <laughs> I said, go ahead. Sarah, he called me back and he says, I don't know why I'm doing this. I like when people say that. Yes. See, when you stay in line, God will cause people to say things like that. I don't know why I want to give you my car. I don't know why I want to give you my house. I don't know why I want to pay off your car. I know why, because I've been steady and faithful. Yes. So, I apologize for taking Please. so long. So 30 days later, we wake up. No, 28 day, days later, we wake up, and we're going through the escrow process. We went ahead and told him we'll sell the house. 28 days later, it was on a Friday. I said, Nettie, do me a favor. Check our bank account. <laughs> just, just check our bank account. We wake up in the morning, and there's close to $1.3 million in our bank Hallelujah. account. Hallelujah. Thank and you. And I'm thinking... I'm thinking, devil, you said I wasn't going to get my chocolate donut. You said that I wasn't going to see the promised land. I like what pastor said. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter about your culture. It matters if you're steady and you're faithful and you continue. You will see the glory yes. of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Sarah and Nettie, would you come, Rick? Stay here just for a minute. Or longer if you want to. 
I had a feeling there was more today. Now, just for the record, I did not tell this man he had three minutes. I don't know where he got that because it wasn't from me. Um, I mentioned something to you if you were here last week that the Lord had led us recently. Over here, man. Uh, how do I say this, Lord? When we were just a few weeks ago up at Karis Bible College for the men's advance, and Brother Andrew was presenting the vision that they have for their Bible school and the expansion for student housing, student activity center. I was just sitting there watching that vision, and those of you who know Brother Andrew, how many of you are familiar with his ministry? You can't live in this area and not be. And we are so thankful for that ministry and what they've done for the whole world, yes, but for Woodland Park and for Colorado Springs. What an impact they've had. So grateful. And as he was presenting that vision, I'm telling you, the Spirit of God just got all over me and said that we were supposed to be a part of that, that we were supposed to, as a church, as a ministry, sow into their expansion. And I don't know all about these things, but I've been in them and around them long enough to know, first of all, know that voice when I hear it, and understand that when the Lord directs you to sow a seed like that, it's because He's setting you up for your future. And I believe you just said that a moment ago. In your seed, your future is in your seed. And before I realized what was going on, I popped off that front row and walked up there and stood next to Brother Andrew. And I said, I believe on behalf of Legacy Church and Pearson's Ministries International, we are supposed to put $100,000 into the expansion of that ministry. And I'm hearing the words as I'm saying them. But it doesn't scare me. If anything, it thrills me. And it makes so much sense to me. Because the Lord knows what we need. He knows we're believing to build this thing out. He knows we're believing to pay this thing off. And of course he would say, take a big old chunk and give it to somebody else. Because that's what gives him access to do exactly what you just heard them say. That's what gives God access to do that in our lives, whether it's in this house or in your house. And uh, when we sat with Rick and Nettie and our other board members this past week, we told them about this seed that we're sowing. And not one of them said, oh, wait, are you sure? Oh, don't do that. You've got a lot going on. No, these are people of faith. And they get excited with us. And we believe that Karis and Andrew Womack Ministries is good ground. And we are privileged to be in this area in support of them. And, you know, I wonder sometimes if people think we came here for that or to get a big group from Karis. You know, that was the furthest thing from our thinking. We just found ourselves in the place God put us. And we're thankful that we are close and we're like literally neighbors. And, and uh, I believe the Lord's put us here not so that we can get something from them, church, but that we can be a blessing to them. So this, this is that seed. And in the next few days, it may take a week or so before we can set up a meeting, but we, Sarah and I, are going to go out there and represent you because this is your money. I heard this. This is your uncapping seed this is for your this ministry. Seed. This is, listen, this is your money. If you have sown into the church, into the ministry at all over these last few weeks, months, whatever it is, this is yours. And you, you are sowing $100,000 into the expansion and making room for more students to come and, and hear the Word of God, for more people to get trained up and sent out to be a blessing from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around the middle. You, you, I don't know if it's sinking in yet. You, you, somebody say, I, that's me. What are you doing? You are sowing. And I don't know if you've ever thought about yourself being able to give like that, but you are today, right now. You are. And I believe our freedom is in this seed. I believe our total debt freedom, our ability to pay everything off, build everything out, it's in the seed, guys. It's in the seed. Can you sense that the Lord is doing something different? We didn't have any of this plan today. 
None of this You're next. Me. This ministry is next. We're in line Glory and we're God. the next. Glory we're the God. next. I declare this is the type of stuff we're seeing because this seed is producing that. Can you see it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So here's what I want us to do. Rick and Eddie are going to come as representatives of our board. Yes. And Sarah and I are here as representatives of you in this church. Mm -hmm. And I want you to just stand with us. And we're going to come into agreement together over this. Amen. And we're not ashamed of this. Right. Because we don't, this isn't about us. It's not about glory to us or to this church. This is the goodness of God. I mean, look around you. This is a good group. Yeah. But how in the world is this group able to do that? That's the goodness of God. That's the grace of God. Great grace is on us all. Thank you, Lord. So, Rick, I want you to pray over this. And we're going to sow this. And as of today, this seed is in the ground. And it's working not only for this church and this house, but in the lives of every person in this church, in this room, and watching online. Stretch your hands because this represents you. Father, we lift this, this seed up to you. According to what I believe you said this morning to this congregation, you said that you're going to take the caps off in our lives personally and in this ministry. And Father, you're going to redig the wells that the Philistines covered. But right now, we declare this seed is giving you permission, Father, to come with your excavators. To come with the backhoe, the Holy Ghost backhoe, and to begin to redig those wells. That we'll be able to draw from those wells. That those wells will be a blessing to us personally, our family, and this church. Hallelujah. And to others, Lord. That these, that the, the, the harvest on this seed is going to cause us to be able to operate in the arena of buying cars for families, homes, paying off homes, Lord. We're, I declare that, I, I need you guys to grab this by faith, that we're the ones that are going to say, Pastor, I'm the one that has the $10,000 tithe check. I'm the one that has a $100,000 tithe check. I'm the one that has the million dollar tithe check. I want to sow it into Legacy Church. So Lord, we declare this seed is producing that type of a harvest. Thank you, Lord. We've been steady, and we've been faithful. Hallelujah. And we are so glad to be called your disciples. And not just your disciples, but Jesus, you said, and we will be free, and free indeed. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Church, I want you just to keep your eyes closed for a moment. We're going to give here in just a moment, but I don't think we're quite ready for it. I can still sense us bumping up against some limitations in our thinking in, and in our believing. Now, those of you who know us, we don't talk about these things all the time, but it's good for us to voice some of these numbers maybe on a level that you have not yet thought on, that you've not yet come up to in your believing. And I can feel us, church, in the Spirit, kind of, kind of choking on a little bit, kind of bumping up against some limitation. This is a unique day. N none of this is planned. you got to understand that. But the Spirit of God is leading and speaking and moving among us. And this is a breakthrough offering today. Yes, it is. This is a breakthrough offering today. But we're going to have to get free in our thinking. We're going to have to get free. And if that's you, nobody's looking around. Nobody's, nobody's trying to draw attention to any person. But if that's you today and some of these numbers, a million here, 1.3 million there, 100,000, if some of that has just seemed like alien to you, if it's just seemed like too big, too much, we're going to break through that right now right today. Now. We're breaking through that right now in Jesus' name. I said we're breaking through that yes, right Lord. now in the name of Jesus. Right we are coming up. We're coming up in our believing. We're coming up in our yes, trust Lord. and in our faith. We're coming up in these things. And none of this is too big for God. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Nothing would be impossible to Him. And nothing is impossible to you who believe. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
If some of you are waiting on us to move on to the next thing in the service, in case you hadn't figured it out yet, this is the service. This is it right here. I've got a whole other word that I got from the Lord, but this is it right here today. This is it right here today. So we're going to just stay with us until we hit some breakthrough in this, until we bust through some of those barriers and limitations that have been on our thinking. We're getting free in the name yes. of Jesus today. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Rick, Nettie, Sarah, do what the Lord would tell you. I know the Spirit of God is saying what He told me in 2020. He told me to think higher. And I believe that's what we have to do today is think higher. None of this ha- many things have happened to us since 2020. But it all happened because he told us to think higher, and so we had, we had to. And that's when this part of this home came in. But we have to think higher. So that's the word, think higher. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. You know, in Isaiah chapter 54, the Spirit of God tells a person who's, a, a group of people who's been thinking small, to, to enlarge their tents. And you have to think about what that means to make room yes. in your heart yeah. for more yeah. than maybe you have ever seen before or understood or comprehended. You know, there's much more and more places to go in God than maybe you've ever been before. Yeah. And God's way, which is so amazing, He is a big God. And he is, he is a God of increase. And he goes from glory to glory, from faith to faith. These are all, this is who he is. So the ability to stop thinking so small is what will begin to open you up to more of his glory. What is his glory? You can find it in tangible results. Good, his goodness in your life. Yes. His provision. These are tangible expressions of his glory. Yes. A new house. Yes. Glory to God. A restored relationship. Yes. Glory to God. Oh, I'd find in a church home and a church family. This is a demonstration of his glory setting you in a family. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Increases at your job. Demonstrations. We talk about the glory of the Lord. Well, it's right before you. And this is how you do it. You stop limiting yourself with small thinking. Yes. I just have one more thing to say. I keep, Lord keeps reminding me of this. When I was in high school, I led worship for a, a college ministry, and we had a guest speaker that came in one day, just like we've had Rick. Now, God uses people like this to stir up yes, the body right. of Christ. You know, we've been talking about the body in here. Well, these are precious gifts in the body, part of the five-fold ministry, the evangelist ministry, that will come into the church and stir you up in love. Yeah. And so when I was younger, uh, in high school, we had a guest speaker come in, and I had led worship that night, and I sat down on like a couple of rows back. And she stopped in the middle of her sermon, came over to me, laid her hand on me on the second row. I didn't know her. She didn't know me. And she said, God says, enlarge your tents. Now, I didn't know what that meant at the time, but I went and studied it out. Enlarge your tents. And then she said this, dream bigger. Stop thinking so small. I grew up in a little town in Arkansas, and I, you know, I'd only seen what I had seen. But God had a plan for my life. And she said, take the limits off. Enlarge your tent. Start seeing the fullness of who I am. Start spending time with me. Dream a little bigger than you've ever dreamed before. 
And I'm telling you, the anointing, it came all over me. I, it was like warm honey that started at the top of my head and dripped over all the way to the floor. And I began to weep in the presence of God. And I, it was me and God in that room and nobody else. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it can be that in this room today if you will receive this uncapping, this taking off all the limits, taking off all this small thinking, saying, Father, I don't get it with my head yet. But I choose to receive it with my heart. And I've thought this small and I've had this poverty mindset for my whole life long. And I refuse to live like that anymore. Yes. No, I am taking off the limits. I'm taking off these things that have held me back for all these years. The devil will not have a stronghold on me. No, I might have grown up in a home that, was, that had that kind of mindset. I might have come from a place where I had nothing. But no, 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 no. I have my own God. <laughs> and he is for me. And he's taken off all of these things. Enlarge, enlarge your capacity to receive from him this morning. Go ahead and give him thanks for all the good things he has in store for you. Start to dream, 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 dream. Dream better, bigger. Dream bigger. Go home tonight and meditate on your bed. Be still and dream with the Lord again. Some of us have stopped dreaming. We are settled. We are stuck. And we are set in this small way of thinking. No, God is a big God. And he has increase on his mind, increase on his mind more and more and more where that came from. Yes. Glory to God. I'm going to read this to you. This is the scripture that the Lord gave me for our message today. And now I can see why uh, not having any of this plan. But in the book of Romans chapter 12, the Bible says in verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. Now look what happens when you begin to renew your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do you live out the will of God? Let me ask you, first of all, are you interested in living out the will of God? Are you interested in finding and fulfilling the will of God in your life? Okay, well, it starts right here with the renewing of your mind. Now, that word renew, when you look it up, it actually is the word that means renovate. Renovate. And that's something we're familiar with. We're very familiar with it around here. If I could ha direct your attention over here to your left, you see some renovation taking place. On your way out of church today, you're going to see renovation taking place. If you go upstairs, you're going to see renovation taking place. I don't know if you've ever been involved in a renovation project, but the beginning days of it, those are the fun days. You know what days those are? Demo days. I heard it. Somebody shout it. Demo days. What are, what are demo days? Those are the days you get to go in there and just take a hammer to old nasty walls. You get to rip up stuff that you're not going to use anymore. You get to throw away junk and it's fun. Demo days are fun. Well, the Spirit of God is saying through Paul here, you've got to do some renovation in the way you think. Isn't this what Nettie said? Think higher. Think up higher. This is what's happening in service right now this morning. Renovation. And it's starting with some demo day. Today's demo day. And we are ripping out some old ways of thinking. We are ripping out some traditional ways of thinking about God. Some tra old traditional religious ways that have kept us small in our thinking and small in our believing. And we are ripping that stuff out. And we are replacing it with the truth of the word. We are replacing it with bigger, greater, grander vision. Glory to God. And we are changing the way we think so that we can prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now he goes on in the next verse to say this. For I say, verse 3, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, 
as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Isn't this interesting? He talks to us about renovating our mind, and the very first place he directs us to start ripping out old ways of thinking is the way we think about ourselves. And he says, I'm saying this to everyone, not to think more highly of yourself than you ought, but think soberly. Now, he didn't say think low. He didn't say think small. He said think sober. Think sober. What's the opposite of sober? Drunk. I heard it. See, everybody was wanting to be quiet on that one. It's okay. We all been delivered from something. What's the opposite of sober? Drunk. Pride has the same effect on your thinking that alcohol has. And he said, think soberly. Don't think too highly. In other words, if you're thinking so highly of yourself that you leave God out of it, you got to be drunk. you got to be out of your mind to think that God is, is not the one that blessed you with this. To think so highly of yourself that you just leave out the grace of God, you're drunk. Think soberly. Think honestly. Because God has dealt to each one the measure of faith. This testimony that you heard today, I know these people, and I can tell you that it was not, not a word of it was said in an effort to draw attention to them. But every word of it was to shine the light on Jesus. And the same measure of faith that produced this in their life, you've been given that measure of faith, and it will produce the same thing. Now, I'm not telling you you got to be at a million or 10 million or whatever tomorrow, but can you take a step? Huh? Can you take a step from wherever you are, a step up? And then what do you do? Take another step up. And then what do you do? You take another step up. And guess what? 16 years later, you'll be living in the dreams, things that, sh that were too big for you 10, 12, 15 years ago. And it will be exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond your wildest imagination, more than you could ask or think. Can you feel your mind being renewed this morning? Ripping out some old ways of thinking, replacing it with the truth of the Word of God. Anything else you want to add to it? Please. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, of course. I know you said it's a little different today, Pastor. May I do something? Please. Pastor Sarah said something in it. The Lord reminded me, the renewing of the mind. And Pastor Jeremy said, taking steps. And I'm back here in the Spirit of God saying, I didn't tell you that to tell the people just to say it. To say it. I meant it. He said there's going to be some people in here that are going to have some caps taken off. They're going to have some whales redug who are going to bring their $10,000 tithe. I'm not saying you're bringing it this morning, but Pastor said there's a step. If you're in the congregation this morning and you have your tithe and your offering ready and you know God was speaking to you that soon and very soon you're going to be that one that brings the $10,000 tithe, get out of your seat and come and step up here right now. Amen. If you know that's you. You have ours. A pastor said, we're taking a step of faith. I'm not saying you're bringing it today, but you know in your spirit, I'm going to be that one. I'm going to be that one. Come quickly. Come with your faith hot. Don't let it cool off. Don't let the enemy try to talk you out of it. Come now with your faith hot. Come close. Come close. There's a lot of $10,000 people here. And ushers have envelopes if you need it. Or yeah, that's true. Hand. Ushers will get one. If you need an envelope. Raise your hand and let that be your sign of contact. Pastor, I'm coming. Pastor Sarah, I need to meet you at the Donut Mills because I have a $10,000 check because I'm next in line. Thank you. Did you just hear that? You're in line. Look around. You're in line. All right. All those that knew when the Holy Ghost said it, that you're going to be that $100,000 tither. You know that's you. Get out of your seat and come and stand behind them. And you're not doing it for no other reason out of obedience. You know that's you. Come on. Come on. You know, last year we were able to tithe $70,000.
we never done that before, but I was next in line. If that's you, the $100,000 people. All right. All those that you know, knew when God spoke it, that you're going to be that million-dollar tither soon. Get out of your seat and come. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Jump over that wall, brother. Come on. Yeah. You know that's you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. That's, that's it. Right here, the million-dollar tither. Hallelujah. Nettie, stand over here. We're the 100000 We're going to that mark. We're going to raise it up. And we're starting today with the seed into the ministry here. Lord. We want to sow five thousand dollars today. Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, to start. Let me say something. Freedom from. We're we're free from debt. Yes. And we have freedom for. Yes. We have yes. we have freedom to sow five thousand because we have no debt. Hallelujah. So that's a. Praise that's the Lord. Freedom. Thank That's you. the freedom you were talking about. Lord. All right, come on. Get a little close. Get tight. Like you're at the donut shop. Get real close to the window. Like you want to smell them. Listen, ushers, make sure they have an envelope. This envelope is going to represent what they're standing for. Now, some of you might be in here, well, hey, Brother Rick, you know, I'm not the 10. I'm not the 100. I'm not the million, but I'm a tither and a sower. Well, step out of your seat and make you get, get yourself in line. Come on. Yeah, come on. It should be the whole church. Thank you. It should be ever get in the mix. Just get in the mix. I'm telling the Holy Spirit is here. There's some construction. The Holy Ghost is here and he's redigging some wells. Matter of fact, there's a pastor just called me. His father was a doctor. His father died. But his father had some other children from another wife well that new wife uh, the, the father died the new wife didn't want his original son to have an inheritance so she clogged up the wells for 30 years he just got a phone call he was at pastor keith moore's conference in sarasota about a month and a half ago while he was in church in the conference while Pastor Keith was singing the song, Debt Free Airplanes, yeah, yeah, yeah. while he was in the congregation, yeah. while the song was being sung, the lawyer called him and said, Your inheritance somehow, some way, has been released to you. Yeah. It was uncapped, yeah. it was unplugged in the middle of the service and that's what's happening right now y'all got to get a little bit more excited man yeah, thank you, i apologize i'm i'm just i'm an excited latino preacher i just get excited so i just need you guys to get excited yeah, i said you're about to be uncapped yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. you're about to be uncovered and it starts this morning Lift up your hands, both hands towards heaven. Father, you spoke to us. You told your disciples to those that believed you. You said if they will continue, if they would continue in the truth, continue in the word, they would be free. Well, Lord, this morning you gave us a word. We make a quality decision to continue in this, to walk in in this to be faithful to be steady somebody say I'm steady, I'm steady. and I'm faithful. I'm faithful father as we're steady and we're faithful we continue in the truth here give Lord. and it shall be given unto us press down shaking together and running over shall men give unto our bosom that's a word that's a word so I'm going to stay steady and continue Lord, in that thank you Lord so Lord right now in the name of Jesus, lift up your, your offerings. Thank you, Lord. Your confession. In the name of Jesus, Father, we bring to you this morning our tithe and our offering. In obedience to what you said for us to be steady and faithful and continue. And you said, Lord, this morning by the Spirit of God, the same God that raised Jesus from the dead. You are going to uncap some things. So right now, in the name of Jesus... I command every cap 
And matter of fact, God, I'm asking you to shake it up a little bit right. so when you uncap it, it just spreads everywhere. That you would uncork some things, Lord, in our lives. And Lord, I'm asking you by the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that you would redig those wells that the Philistines try to cover up. So I declare from this moment forward, this offering has demoed some things. It's recreating some things in our lives. We will remember this day that we've been uncorked, uh, uncapped, unplugged, and redug. So Lord, we thank you for this, and we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Do you believe it? Give God praise and glory in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We hope you enjoyed this message. If you need someone to pray with you, there are several ways for you to contact us. Feel free to give us a call at 817-577-0180. You can also contact us through the Legacy Studios app or either of our websites. Giving options are available online at pearsonsministries.com and legacychurch.family. If you prefer, you can also text an offering. Simply text LEGACY in any dollar amount to the number 28950 and follow the prompts. Be blessed today. We love you. And remember, you are always welcome here in the House of Faith.